Um, we're going to take a little bit of a pivot from that. We're going to be a little bit more focused on data and our specific strategy. Um, so I want to start out with a quick survey. Um, we might not call it scientific. We'll call it a convenient sample. There's probably a little selection bias in this room. <laughs> Who here knows what crocs are? Show of hands. All right, so you're, you're validating the research that we've already done. Yeah. Um, we typically see about 68% uh, unaided awareness. So from my very quick count, I think we're, we're somewhere close to that. How many actually own Crocs? All right, so we at least got a, a few more valuable impressions um, just by coming today. Um, but how many of you knew that Crocs made shoes like this? Not the, uh, not the foam clog. And Ben is wearing a nice pair as well. Only a handful of hands. So um, to frame our problem, uh, we have an awareness problem, but it's not for the brand. It is for the extended product line. Um, and so when we're thinking about growing the business, right, we know that we need to drive revenue. Um, and you know that's measurable with attribution through ad servers and all that sort of good stuff. But um, you know, that's fairly short term, right? That's managing for the next quarterly report. Um, we want to get beyond that. We want to grow um, long term, not just short gains. Um, so we also we can measure new customer acquisition, and we can start to get to a value of um, you know how we're growing for the future. Some of the constraints on our growth are that the footwear category in the United States is basically flat, has been, and it's also dominated by some of the biggest brands in the history of humanity. So how do we, as a relatively small, although very recognizable brand, leverage what we can do and the approaches that we can take in order to capture market share in a flat market. And so we're gonna talk about how we can use um, our data along with the brand data to get a more holistic picture of what the consumer looks like, what their journey is, what their interests are, and how we can reach them with the right message at the right time. And it was interesting, we were you know, listening to the previous talk, we were commenting on how that actually applies to what we're doing because while we have an overall strategy, and we always try to think of what is the best strategy to, to target these people and to reach and get the message across, it's also a very emergent space in that we want to be agile. We want to be able to shift the, the strategy and, and, and react to ongoing uh, 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 trends that arise in real time. And so we'll talk about how we can actually do that uh, by complementing the brand data with the data that distillery brings that has a more holistic view of what people do, both online and location-wise, in their, in their digital lives. So kind of circling back up to the top, right? there's been a lot of discussion about reported versus observed data. Um, we focus a lot on observed data, but we do some surveys. We do a brand monitor, um, and we track awareness and intent to purchase and all those sort of good metrics. Um, but those are harder to optimize on in flight, right? It's fairly expensive to conduct the surveys, and um, we get a couple readouts a year. Um, it's not like we can optimize on it every day or even in real time. So um, from a reported data standpoint, there's definitely, you know, there's, there's room to improve. But there's also lots of room for us to do things intelligently with observed data. So we can start with um, data that's observed on Crocs econ site. That's a great place to start. Um, so we can tell from that that, you know, there are a lot of people that are clog loyalists, right? We saw a lot of people raise hands about the, the clogs, but it might be potentially as divisive as Pepsi and Coke, right? Um, so when we start breaking apart the, the traffic to the site, there are a lot of constituencies. And so we can, we can look at it from a pragmatic sense. Who are our valuable customers? Who are our lapsed customers? And, you know, that is just one way to look at things. Um, I think distillery brings a really good tool set for unsupervised learning rather than us telling them, hey, these are the three segments that we want. What can you tell us about the data that we might not be recognizing already? And so as opposed to looking at the, at the data and the traffic and what consumers do on the website when they're looking at, at the brand, and so, um, you know, like we mentioned, you could be a clog enthusiast, you could want to try to stay away from clogs and look at other products, and you can, we can know that based on the traffic uh, on the website itself. But what happens when they're not interacting with the brand? What are, what are, what's the consumer doing? What websites are they looking at? What do they find interesting? What are they researching? Where are they going physically? What locations do they actually show up in? All of that data 
we get through, our, our data infrastructure has to, uh, comes from the programmatic ad buying. So we're seeing all these, bid, in the bid stream, we're seeing all these ad buys go through because traditionally we, we are a media company that also sells media and, and displays ads, but we realize that we have all of this data at our fingertips and we can actually use it to understand consumer behavior without even showing any ads. And so looking at that data, what they're doing outside of their interaction with the brand complements what they're doing when they're looking at the brand. And we can understand and partition the, these uh, consumers and these populations into different behavioral profiles based on that interest and based on the websites that they're going to throughout the internet, whether it be travel, whether it be families, and, and really being able to segment the population that's, that's looking at the Crocs website and understand what they're doing outside of their Crocs interaction. So if we have hypotheses about who is valuable uh, or where we might be able to take advantage of growth, we can scale those hypotheses through the, the distillery network and reach more of the target consumers than we can otherwise directly. So just taking the data that we have available, learning, and turning it into action, which in this case is media, is great. Um, but you know, we've heard from a lot of previous speakers that um, it's also about showing the right creative at the right time to the right audience. So um, one other thing is, so when you talk about unsupervised learning, there's typically not great labels or insights that come out, right? You're gonna have a machine break the world out into pieces and it might not have a human intelligible label. Um, one thing that we do get very good information out of from the distillery team is those labels which we can, for each audience and who's actually performing well, so the travel audience. Um, so since people are typically going to the beach or someplace warm in the summer and we want to sell them sandals, you know, perhaps we should do some uh, creative that's targeted specifically towards that segment. And then use the um, observed data that can also be indicators ahead of time before they ever get to the site that, you know, this is an audience that needs this creative. And so this um, unsupervised learning method is different from what we traditionally used to do. In the past, we would, we would make a hypothesis, we would, we would have a, you know, we would suppose we'd say, okay, we're assuming that, you know, probably families are interested in Crocs, there are kids' shoes, there's men's, there's women, and let's try and go after them and try and learn what their behavioral patterns are, et cetera. That's more of a supervised learning approach where we, we have a label, we know what we're looking for, now we're trying to figure out more about those people, and we know who, who they are. With an unsupervised uh, learning approach, what we're saying is we don't know anything about the data. We let the machine and the algorithms figure out what the behavioral patterns are. And this is where that comes in, that it's an emergent uh, uh, mechanism where we don't know what we're going to find. We're not telling the, the machine anything. We're saying to the algorithms, here's all these millions of people going to these millions of websites. Now you find the, the, the patterns, where people tend to go to the same websites over and over again, and it creates these clusters of people and of websites that people tend to visit together. And we see that this co-visitation pattern, that they tend to go to the same uh, places, the same websites. When we overlay the, the Crocs consumer, we then start to see a picture of what consumers of Crocs belong to which of these behavioral clusters. And we get a finer grained understanding of who those uh, uh, target audiences are. Um, and we can find, A, it helps us to, first of all, uh, um, understand some of the hypotheses and confirm them, but it also shows us emergent data and emergent clusters of people that we didn't realize were actually, that it was a thing. But it turns out, even looking at, for example, the families, we turned out that we also saw a lot of people who were in a travel researcher cluster. And that wasn't something that we necessarily had thought of. But when they're researching travel, and going places, they're also looking at buying Crocs. This kind of approach allows us to also be more intentional, to uh, tie back to Pear's conversation. We don't have to start with an assumption about who's going uh, to buy. We need a goal, that is to uh, expand market share or penetrate a new market, and a set of um, results, that is buyers, that we can start from, and then we can work with partners like McKinney Distillery to accomplish those goals without having to come up with uh, fictional or persona type labels that may not match who's actually going to buy from us. 
Yeah, and um, I, I must say that Ben's team has done a great job of investing in resources that allow this type of um, actual analysis to happen. So, um, you know, one big piece of all of the modeling is making sure that you have good data going in. Um, and that's also what allows us to basically go back after the fact and, um, you know, maybe we didn't have a hypothesis, but it doesn't mean that we can't learn something as well. Right, there's always something valuable to learn in the data. Um, and interestingly, you know, we get a, a, um, comments from marketers that do this research and they pay to get these behavioral profiles and then they use those as a basis and usually it's based on surveys and they use this as a basis to then make their strategy decisions for the year. Um, and it's interesting to see our behavioral profiles in the clusters of, of segments that we come up with versus what exists from the, from the surveys. Sometimes they match up, sometimes they're a little different, but they're complementary. And um, it's important to keep in mind, you know, these, these behavioral pro profiles are actually answers to a certain question that you're asking in the surveys. And the question that we're asking, looking at the digital data and the actual observed behavior of people online and their geolocation is a different question. So the answers might look a little different. So sometimes you would, you would see behavioral profiles that are a little different, but they are based on their observed online behavior and their locations, and they're complementary to the traditional behavioral uh, profiles that you see from survey data. As a global brand, this is something that we definitely see. Given a similar assortment around the world, we find much different patterns in who buys uh, which elements of that assortment, depending on which country you're in, and that can be difficult to scale for uh, if you're gonna plan from bottoms up demographic or other targeting, uh, but it's easier if you can start from the successes and find out uh, others who maybe share those behavior patterns. And just, you know, kind of tying that back to a concrete media buying strategy. So you're telling me if, if I have to stick to this demographic profile that I should just go ahead and cut out 50% of the world? I mean, um, when you can get a more fine-grained prediction of this person is likely to spend this much, um, then you have a, a much finer grain control, and, um, and then you get to see great ROI and keep building new projects. Right, and we have traditionally always, even in the media serving business, have um, preferred not to use demographics as a way to segment audiences because we feel that leaves you with a blind spot and you miss a lot of people. There are influencers, there are people who are, um, you know, an example that, that um, Prox gave is that when you see people, who buys men's, who buys shoes, men's, Crocs men's shoes. When you look at the data, it's women that are buying the, the, the men's shoes. And so if you were to target a certain demographic, you would miss out on the influencers and maybe pe the, the other demographics that are doing it as well. And so our behavioral approach is one that looks at the actual observed intent and behavior. So we would get those people as well. We can overlay demographic data on that and then see what the breakout is and understand demographically what's going on and give, give us a better insight and story into uh, the consumer. But we don't want to miss those people that maybe, you know, if you put them into certain boxes, we might not be able to get. So we haven't gotten to the point of overlapping our media exposed elements of our brand uh, monitor panel. But we can, over time, uh, augment the brand panel because it is a significant investment and it is very longitudinal in nature uh, based on the, the ideas that, and insights that we, we pull from our media activations. We can add questions. We can um, drill down into additional uh, study topics in uh, one of our, our biannual surveys. But I'm really curious about opportunities to, to tie together uh, the massive amount of media exposure data we now have with uh, the brand panel. Yeah, and I guess it, it really gets back to the previous conversation of uh, how do you focus your time on what's the most valuable. So um, I think that there are definitely a lot of questions that we still have to ask and answer, and, and that's great because that's where we learn. Um, and really, with the new tools that we have, we can um, start answering some of these questions and organizing our thoughts around them so that we can ask better questions. We have time for one question. I, I saw yeah. silence up here. <laughs> yeah. so I right. thought, okay, uh, we have time for one question. There's one over here. Great. 
Just in under the wires, about to bang the gavel. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I wanted to ask, how applicable is this approach to more B2B kind of uh, situations where maybe there's a bit less of those ad data um, available? So the question is around B2B? Yes. So this is also applicable to B2B. This is actually applicable through uh, a lot of different verticals um, that are very different from um, CPG to B2B. Um, when we're looking at B2B, we're, uh, uh, we can focus on understanding the, the customers and who they are and those companies, what, what, um, what is their, uh, in the life cycle of, of the business, where they're at, what their interests are, how it is that we can uh, sort of plug in to help them in that process. So uh, um, definitely looking to B2B is something that, that is possible to do with that data as well. Um, and also, the better your CRM database about your existing customers is, obviously, the better you can do with it, right? Right, and that's something that we ingest as well, your CRM data. So then we have sort of a seed set of data of, of the people that we know are high-value customers, um, and we can look at people who have the same behavioral profiles, uh, prospecting, find new customers, expand the, uh, the customer base, um, as well as understand insights about those customers and where they're at in the life cycle. Thank you very much. Thank you.